Namo Buddhaya, this is Abhinav and I welcome you. In this video, I am sharing my learnings from Middle East Courses 75. Uh, this is with Magandya, known as Magandya Sutta. And Magandya basically told, Magandya was like telling, uh, uh, he was like angry on the Buddha and he was saying Buddha to be, he said, uh, it's very bad for Master Gautama, that life destroyer. He was labeling uh, Gautam Buddha as a life destroyer. So, uh, the Brahmin uh, uh, Bharadvarj, uh, who he said this, said that be careful what you say because many astute aristocrats, Brahmins, householders and ascetics, they uh, are devoted to, uh, students of the Buddha. So, he said, no, I will say him to be a life destroyer. So, so then what happened was, that he says, go ahead and tell the Buddha that I told him to be a life destroyer. Now, Buddha got this clear audience. He had this power of clear audience. So, he, he just, in his meditation, he could know that uh, Magandya had said uh, this uh, about the Buddha. So, Buddha uh, discussed with him and he went to the Buddha. He was, Buddha was meditating. So, he wandered Magandya, went up, got for a walk and approached him. Now, Buddha said that, Magandya, the eyes like the sights, it loves and enjoys them. That is being tamed, guarded and protected and restrained by the realized one and he teaches Dhamma for its restraint. Is that what you were referring to when you called me a life destroyer? So Buddha always did not like retort back. Uh, 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 he, he first understood what was the context of when a person calls something a life destroyer. It's a like very kind of aggressive statement. But Buddha wanted to know. So Buddha said that what what basically the nature of the eyes is that it likes the sights. Similarly, the nature of the ears is it likes the sounds. So what the realized one has is he has tamed, guarded and protected the sense, uh, sense, sense, sense basis. And he basically advises, he teaches, teaches the Dhamma which advises restraint. Right? Because he, the Buddha's teachings are that if you go into the sense pleasures and crave for these sense pleasures, the suffering will continue. So, Buddha said, is it because you are saying that, you because of that you are tell, telling me to be life destroyer? So, he said yes. Uh, so, Magandya said yes. Then Buddha actually tries to tell him why he advocates restraint on self-sense pleasures and he also tries to convey that there is a higher pleasure that he wants his students to move to which is much higher pleasure as compared to the lower pleasure of sense pleasures. right? So that is a coming out in this discourse. So Buddha says that take someone who used to amuse themselves with sights known by the eye that are likable, desirable, agreeable, pleasant, sensual and arousing. Sometime later, having truly understood the origin, ending, gratification, drawback, escape of sights and having given up craving and dis dispelled passion for the sight, they would live Rid of thirst, their mind peaceful inside. So, so he said, what do you say to them? Right? What do you say to a pe person who earlier was living in sensual pleasures and now he has given up th this need for sensual pleasures? So, Magandya said, nothing. I will not say anything to that person. Then Buddha gave his personal story. Now Buddha is sharing his personal story that when I was still, so this is his this princely days when Buddha was a prince. I used to amuse myself, supplied and provide. So basically what happened in the context here is that when Buddha bo got born, there was this prophecy about him. Uh, someone told his father that your son will either be a great ruler or he uh, a king or he will be a teacher who will rule the, rule the world. Either way he will rule the world. So Shudodhana did not want him to be a monk and a teacher and all. So he gave him all the worldly pleasures in the palace so that he... He doesn't see any suffering and he grows up to become a king. So Buddha was talking about that period in his life. He said that I used to amuse myself, supplied and provided with sights known by the eye, sounds known by the ear, smells known by... Means all the luxuries were provided which were very good for all his five senses. So Buddha says I had three long houses. Like he had three palaces. One for the rainy season, one for the winter season, one for the summer season. Every palace he used to stay for four months. That means that much luxury he got. I got entertained by musicians, all women musicians, right? And sometime later, 
I understood the origin. So then Buddha went in search for, uh, for the freedom from suffering. He realized that this sensual pleasures, being in that sensual pleasures gave suffering. So he realized, he understood origin, ending, gratification, drawback, escape of sensual pleasures. Having given up craving and dispelled pleasure, I live, rid of thirst, awakened. Buddha says, I see other sentient beings who are not free from sensual pleasures, being consumed by sensual pleasures, burning with passion for sensual pleasures. Indulging in sensual pleasures. I don't envy them, nor do I hope to enjoy that. Why is that? Now, listen to it very um, attentively. Because there is a satisfaction that is apart from sensual pleasures and unskillful qualities, which even achieves the level of heavenly pleasure. That means Buddha is trying to portray that there is another level of pleasure which is much higher, much more refined than the sensual pleasures which is like cravings about food, craving about sex, craving about, you know, uh, seeing something good or lust or something like that, craving about good smells, right, perfumes, right? something which is craving about food, much higher pleasure is there, which equates like a pleasure of a uh, heavenly pleasure. Then he gives like the example of a kind of a, that is suppose a householder was there and he, he was very rich, affluent, he, he, he would amuse himself with a lot of sensual pleasure. Then he practiced good deeds. He goes to heaven. And heaven also he was delighted, amused by all the nymphs and everyone. But the would the gods in that realm, would they be envying the human householder for his household pleasures? No, because the gods themselves, they enjoy that higher level of pleasure. So Buddha was trying to say that, so, so Smargandhya said, no, uh, why is that? Because heavenly sensual pleasures are much better than human pleasures. So similar way Buddha said that there is a satisfaction that is apart from sensual pleasures. right? Then Buddha gives the example for leprosy. I will not go in detail because this it's a long discourse. right? There was another kind of analogy that Buddha gave about a person who is affected by leprosy and he gets a medicine and he gets treated. So another person who doesn't have a leprosy, he would look at that leprosy person taking a medicine. He would not envy the medicine. Why? Because he he himself doesn't have a problem. Like, why you need a med medicine is when you are facing a problem. If you are not facing a problem, why you will envy the other person? So, that way Buddha like, gave the analogy of this uh, leprosy thing. So, Buddha says, Sensual pleasures of the past, future and present are painful to touch. Fearly burst, fiercely burstening, burst, burning and scorching. These sentient beings who are not free from sensual pleasures, being consumed by craving, burning with passion, have impaired sense faculties. So even though the sense pleasure, pleasures are actually painful, they have a distorted perception. And this is where we are all stuck. We think that these things or these, you know, sensual pleasures are pleasant, but they are actually not. And this is where we need to bring our mindfulness to our cravings, to our intentions. That, you know, what is, what we we have to develop that right view that what I think as something which is pleasant is actually not pleasant. It has suffering within it, which is coming to back to the noble truth number one. Life is suffering. There is suffering with, within everything. right? Even if from a distance it looks that everything is very good. Think about your work, relationships, family, everywhere. Somewhere, wherever you try to find happiness right? and, and, and this grasping tendency, craving tendency that that we get, ultimately, it has its a layer of suffering that is there, right? I'm just taking out the main main points. The link to the entire discourse is there in the description. Do check. It's a long discourse. Do check if possible. If you can read the discourse, you'll get more insights, right? So this is basically another analogy of like a, a, a person who is wearing a garment, right? Which is, you know, he is blind. So someone cheats them with a dirty soiled garment and they wear it and thinking it's a white garment. Then they are cured by a medicine and their eyes are cured and then they realize that that uh, this uh, well, I was being cheated. Similar way a person who comes in Buddha's teaching, they realize 
that I have been cheated, right? And this is what happened to me also. Before coming to Buddha's teaching, I had a lot of misconceptions about permanent self and everything. But after coming to Buddha's teaching, you know, lot of things changed in me. I realized, you know, lot of things which I had like preconceived notions and you know from various books and all that you read and you develop those notions. But when you come in the Buddha's teaching, it is so refined and so at such a highest level that you know you just your your those notions go and you feel that you've been cheated and tricked all this while all these ideas and concepts through all these ideas and concepts right so so that is how buddha says that uh, he says uh, buddha says that well done magandya you should associate with true persons when you associate with true persons right you will hear the truth so here true persons is the master the realized one the realized one is buddha buddha and his teaching so that's why i always suggest that come to the teaching right meditate daily and start kind of try read one sutta a day this is like coming back to the buddha is there with us although not physically but his through his teaching he is there with us right so dhamma is the we take refuge in the dhamma when we read the discourses so come and read the discourses so buddha says when you associate with true persons you will hear the true teaching when you hear the true teaching you will practice in line with the teaching when you practice in line with the teaching you will know and see for yourself these are diseases boils and darts and here is where the diseases boils and darts cease without anything left over when my grasping ceases continued existence ceases when continued existence ceases rebirth ceases when rebirth ceases old age death sorrow lamentation pain sadness distress cease this is how the entire mass of suffering ceases right so this realization we need to get through our practice not believing in some some notion or some concept of view direct experience right that we will do through our mindfulness practice and our vipassana meditation then he said that he he wants to be ordained his he, he his mind became clear magandya's mind became clear and he said that i want to be a mendicant so buddha said that because some you are coming from some other sect there will be four months of probation and after that and so he became part of the sangha and it is like said that he uh, living alone withdrawn diligent keen and resolute but magandya realized the supreme culmination of the spiritual path in this very life that means he become a full arihant in this very life right so this is the middle discourse 75 i hope my sharing was of some help to you do share your thoughts and insights in the comment section thank you so much for watching this video namo buddhaya namo